Michael Hernandez here for MLH Media Uncensored. We are here today with Mr. Carlos Figueroa. Man, the the other man behind Chi Wee Wee's over there in Northern California. You just helped your teammate make weight right now. You've been doing a whole lot of things. What's going on, my man? How's the day going? How's your Friday? Uh, it's going good. Uh, I got up early, got some miles in for, uh, for my cardio, for my upcoming fight. And then I, after that, I, I put my focus on helping my buddy make weight for his uh, first amateur MMA fight. So uh, that's uh, that's good. And uh, he's on weight, so he's going to freshen up, feel a little better, and then he's probably going to head over to the weigh-ins. Weigh-ins are like at five. So, so yeah, he's on weight like a pro, so that's good. And you guys are going to be having that event for David Terrell over there, Rumble in the Valley, his second event. How is that to kind of, I mean, you were in the corner for his last event for a couple of, for a couple of guys, and then I believe you also helped corner another one of your teammates over there as well. How is that to be in the corner and helping out with a couple of your teammates and helping them get ready for your fights when you, I mean, you've been in this game as well, and you've definitely had your own share of getting ready for fights, much like how you're getting ready for November 15th. Um, yeah, it just feels good, bro. It feels good to be able to give back to my team, you know, or, or like just the experience. I've learned a lot, like from making mistakes to doing it right, to doing it wrong. So I'm just like, uh, from the nutrition to how to cut the weight the right way, you know? So, uh, I just, uh, I just, whatever knowledge I got from people, like, uh, at one point I was working with, uh, uh, Eric, who's, uh, Jake Paul's nutritionist and Conor McGregor's nutritionist. Uh, he used to train with Dave a long time ago, so Dave linked me up with him a few years ago, and uh, so uh, I got a lot of knowledge just from working with that guy, you know, on how to make way, how to eat, how to water load the proper way, and shit like that. So uh, I was, I took advantage of that, wrote shit down, or saw what worked best for me, and then I just kind of passed it on to my team, you know, and uh, and it seemed to work out right now again. So that's a good thing. And then I, after not only that, but just being around Raul and other people like my buddy Joe Soto, other guys that fought on the big show and stuff. Uh, I've been like with Joe for weight cuts for fights, fight week. Uh, I've been with Raul for multiple fight weeks, weight cuts, and um, and it's all the same process in a way, you know. So, yeah, um, I, it feels good to give back. No, and that must be pretty interesting too, because you like. Like how we were stating a little bit before on the call, you've really been kind of part of some, I mean, some rather crazy journeys if you really think about it. I mean, think about Joe Soto, somebody that took that championship match on like, what was it, a day's notice, like saved yeah, the UFC Raul. event. And then you had Raul Rosas, the youngest UFC fighter in the whole entire history of the company. I know the company's only been around for 30 years, but you've been around for, I mean, not only to see Raul's career flourish, and I mean, you've really seen him grow up, but like how you said, you were around it when Joe Soto was over there at NCFA. Can you kind of just give that overall like environment of how it is to train over there? Because I believe that's one of the most slept on gyms in kind of Northern California's North Cal Fighting Alliance. I mean, David Terrell, he's got a lot of killers going in and out of there. And then of course, all the scrap pack guys come and visit Nate Diaz, Gilbert Melendez, bring their guys over there as well. So you're just having a flourishment of knowledge. How is it to kind of be over there and be one of the pillars as well? Um, it's good, you know, uh, like, uh, like at first sometimes, you know, like you, uh, like, uh, that's all, that's where I actually started training and stuff. And then I remember training with these guys and shit and, and getting smashed on consistently getting smashed on bro. To almost where like it fucked to my head. Like, I'm like, fuck, maybe I'm not good enough and shit like that. Then I go to other gyms and I'm, I'm rolling with black belts or I'm training with other guys and I'm fucking tapping them out. And I'm like, wait, fuck, like, how come this feels so much easier, you know? So uh, it's definitely, like, different, like, uh, like especially when it comes to the grappling and the jujitsu. Like, uh, um, I can't really describe, like, there's been a couple of guys that I, I can't even describe, like, how how easy they made it seem and flawlessly and then just, just smash, smash you. And then you go to another gym and you, you're rolling with a black one. You're thinking, like, oh, fuck, this dude's good. And then you realize that he's not that good actually you know or or the it's not the same you know what i'm saying at least when it comes especially when it comes to the grappling like for sure so uh then it's then you start building that confidence you're like oh fuck man like why am i selling myself short you know what i'm saying like and then you realize that you're actually training with some savages 
No, and I think you definitely have a very much an expertise of knowledge in that. And just someone that's like looking through your record at A1 Combat, you're 2 and 0 for the promotion with two finishes on your record, both of those being some first round finishes. What do you think about going back to this promotion? I know you've had a little bit of a break from being over there at A1, but now coming back, and it, it kind of feels like almost like a homecoming. It's in Northern California. You're going to have a lot of people over there for this fight, more, more than likely. How is it to kind of really just have this date align? It almost feels like it's like destiny aligning in a sense, because I mean, your company's been killing it. Chiwiwi's been doing great. Everything's been kind of aligning for Mr. Carlos Figueroa now. Can you kind of explain the process before going into November 15th and how this all came together? Um, yeah, um, to be honest, at one point I was going to just stop fighting, you know, because I got other things going on, like other business uh, going on other than the Chiwiwis to where I'm, I'm like, I don't got to fight. You know, I set myself up and um, and then I saw Raul fucking go out there and get signed. And I'm like, man, what am I doing? I got, I got it. It kind of inspired me to get back in there, to be honest, bro. And then uh, I go out there, I finish these two guys, and they kind of lit a fire back under me. And then I take on, I take two losses after that. Like, I, I try to rush the process, bro, you know? I try to take fights right away, and I should have, like, slowed down. And uh, and then, um, but I'm excited to get back in there. Uh, I'm happy I'm going back back to A1. Like, uh, if, if you really look at it, I feel like I, I fought for LFA and I fought for A1, and I kind of feel like those are, like, the biggest promotions I fought for, you know? Um, and I'm undefeated and with the, uh, those three fights at least, you know? Like, I got three finishes, in L one in LFA and then two in, uh, in uh, A1. I'm excited about this matchup. I feel like uh, I'm not – discrediting my opponent or thinking that i'm just gonna run through him but i'm thinking but i am training hard so i can run through him you know like and uh but i'm taking him completely serious but the goal is to, like i'm sure he's thinking the same thing he's gonna try to run through me and shit like that you know and uh, but that's the goal for every fight it's like to go in there and try to get these guys out of there like uh and i just feel like i'm, I'm taking more of a different mentally mental approach towards the game like uh to where like I feel like that's that's been my downfall in my career is like sometimes me doubting myself, you know what I'm saying? And um yeah. so I feel like uh I feel like uh as long I feel that my cardio is gonna be on point and my my men my mental's gonna be on point and then uh I don't I don't it doesn't even matter if, if he pulls out and they bring me another guy, you know, like I, I feel like I'm gonna go in there and smash whoever they put in front of me and get my hand raised because uh, I'm doing all the work to get the cardio on point so I know I can go three hard rounds with anybody. Um, I know I'm high level. You know, my record might not show I'm high level, bro, but I'm, I'm high level. I know I'm high level, bro. I've been around no, a lot of guys. And that's a jig, exactly what I was going to say. It's like, I mean, a lot of people may look at your record and may think a certain way, but I mean, watching your fights, anybody can tell you that record is very, very deceiving, and anybody signing the dotted line is in for a hell of a night. And I think even when you fought Brian Brian Dow, I mean, in that last one, that, that was an absolute scrap for the ages, both you guys going at it. Can you kind of go into that one and what your mindset was for that one because i know like how you said you're going into these matchups back to back you know it's it's a different type of mindset to go into these fights especially like how you're saying back to back to back and just constantly putting your body through camps you know um to be honest with the brandon Dow fight i kind of fought more with like ego than than a strategy you know what i'm saying because uh I should have took him down. I should have figured out how to win the fight instead of uh, trying to sit there and bang it out with him. Because that's his strength, obviously, you know. It's on the feet. And I would have too much pride trying to get that knockout. But, like, if I would have been shooting or something, you know, maybe the outcome would have been different and stuff. But um, I was excited. I was excited to fight somebody like that. This guy was knocking guys out, you know. He and I gotta give it to him. That dude has balls. He's a real fighter, you know. There's not a lot of guys that out there like that. Are, a lot of guys are trying to cherry pick their fights and shit like that, you know. And I remember, uh, I remember punching this fucker, and I see him rock, get rocked, and he'll look at me and he'll be like, "Come on, like let's go." And then, then I knew I had, I couldn't just rush in. You know what I'm saying? Because you rush in, then you get fucking finished and shit. But uh, I feel like I had a little bit too much. Uh, ego in that fight, and and I and I should have I should have gone to the game plan. Like Raul told me to take him down in the second round. He told me that don't forget, bro. If you take him down, more than likely you, you can finish him. You know, 
or like or take them down and hold them down you're gonna win the fight and i just completely disregarded what he told me and i went out there and i fucking kept trying to swing and and then at the end we ended up fucking banging it out for the last little bit of the of the round but uh but i i mentally i gotta be ready to stick to the game plan and follow the game plan or change the game plan if i have to to get the win you know like um i don't want to go out there and fight with the eagle definitely always the the biggest challenge for a lot of fighters when you go in there is to to try and stick to that game plan because i mean it's such a rush when you get in there it's i mean you only got five minutes within a round you got three rounds and you're just trying to go ahead and you know get that finish and get that glory but it definitely was a hell of an experience to watch let me tell you for all the fans that are watching at home i think they're definitely thanking carlos figueroa and brian dow for that experience in the cage but coming up man i mean just to speak up more a little bit about that relationship with raul and the relationship you have overall with that whole family can you kind of go into how it's been to not only be around for Raul's career but his brothers as well because their careers have also had some time over at a1 combat and i mean they're some pre- they're stars in their own right they're possibly on the doors to the ufc what are your thoughts about that whole Ro- rosas fam- that whole rosas family and their in- mma impact and over we're all just getting to work alongside them. You know, like, uh, I, I love them like my brothers or my brother like that. Like, they, their parents treat me like the same. So it's like their family to me. Like, we spent multiple Christmases together. Like, I, uh, yeah, I can't say enough. You know, I don't got a dad or anything like that. So I feel like uh, his dad's almost been like a dad for me as well and stuff. So, um, or even my mom, you know, uh, so I'm just kind of like alone and I got a couple siblings and shit like that, but that's kind of like, almost like they call me their ad- adopted son, you know? So, uh, so I'm just thankful. And I, and I know that Jess, Jesse's like a fight or two from getting signed to the UFC or going to the contender, you know? And then I think, um, I think Kevin's going to make a lot of noise because he likes knockouts and, and you could tell in his last fight, how he fucking killed that guy. And uh, and his grappling's also on that level, you know what I'm saying? Like um, everybody's grappling's on that level, but then you know Kevin likes to knock people out, so I feel like uh, he also brings he's gonna bring a different like style, and I feel like that's people like to see people get knocked the fuck out, you know? Let's be honest. So that's um, what sells. So uh, I feel like uh, I feel like he's gonna be in the UFC within the next year, you know? I feel like sometime next year he'll get the call, you know? Like he was supposed to fight like a week ago um dude pulled out and then they're having like the same trouble that i had like in the beginning i couldn't get no fights bro so that's why i would just take whatever i would get and then now that i'm at the time i was just like i've always kind of had this mentality like i'll fight anybody anywhere anytime i don't give a fuck but in reality if you think about it, this business and you got to be smart you got to pick your fights you know you're if you're gonna fight for fucking a thousand bucks 500 bucks whatever it is in the beginning of your career you know, like, uh, why do you want to fight a fucking killer for? You know what I'm saying? You're not getting paid the big money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's better just build your record and and not take these crazy fights and wait till you have to fight these crazy guys, but actually get a bag for it, you know? And uh, and I feel like that's the way the game is. But then I also feel like there's, the game's full of a bunch of pussies and shit like that. But uh, it's, but- it's the hardest balance I because I, I definitely feel you. It's like to, in order to get to that UFC level, you need to fight, you need to get this certain record, you know? But then at the same time, if you lose to too many guys, it's like, oh, well, you know, you've lost so many times. But it's like, how is that a knock against you if you're losing to guys that are actually going and doing the thing, you know, that are actually going and winning fights as well? So, because you'll see guys on the regional record where you look at their losses and you're like, a lot of these guys are either A, in the UFC or former UFC guys. How is this guy not in the UFC, you know? So it's it's crazy to me. So it's it's good to see another fighter having that thought as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, for me, it's hard for me to get fights, bro. I've been trying to get on A1 since the last time, and nobody wanted to fight me, according to them, at least, you know? Like, I don't know. But, like, uh, they were trying to get me on there, and it was, like, at one point I was just like, just tell me who and give me the eight weeks, you know? or six weeks at least to get ready and i'll fight but uh they'll be like oh these guys don't want to fight this guy i'm not gonna start naming names and shit like that but they're just like these guys don't want to fight these guys don't want to fight and then some of these guys i've actually trained with so i could see why they wouldn't want to fight you know like uh like 
Because, I mean, especially now that I know what I got to do to kind of win the fight if I were to fight some of these guys. But training's always different than fighting, you know, so I don't really hold on to that too much. But but uh, like I said, I've I've trained with a lot of guys that have fought in the UFC, that have been champions or, or fought for titles. And like and even like my boy is killing it right now. His brothers are killing it. And I know that I'm of that level, bro. I just made a lot of mistakes early in my career that kind of makes it look like I'm not that level, but I definitely know I'm that level for sure. And well, it must be a hell of a hard assignment to go ahead for Tom Anderson to say, Hey, I got this half Mexican, half Guatemalan guy that wants to go ahead and swing and bang and go ahead in that cage and go at you with all he's got. I mean, it's a pretty hard sell. So I can't blame a lot of these promoters for having trouble finding you a matchup over there, Carlos. But speaking a little bit more about your overall relationship with Raul and how, I mean, let's just go back to Louisville, the Yum Center. The whole, the night that Chiwiwis was created and just broadcast into the world, that was the saying that you and Raul had kind of had for a while, you know, you and your buddies kind of just shooting the shit. And now it's a, it's a worldwide. You got people, you got cops pulling you over, like, just go into this, man. Oh, bro. Like, I, I came from, like, a really rough background and shit like that. And uh, I remember I started saying that shit in juvenile, huh? So this shit goes back, like, 15 years or something, you know? I was <laughs> saying that shit in juvenile, huh? And then I, uh, and then uh, when me and Raul were trained, you know, like, uh, when because they were little, I've known these guys since they were little kids, bro, you know? So uh, at one point, I'd always be the guy that got to the top of the mountain first and shit like that. And I'd be like, oh, if you guys don't fucking make it, like, uh, you ain't getting a ride back down, you know, because the car was up there. And so we had to run up to the car again. And then we'd get to drive back down from the mountain and stuff like that. And I'd always, like, just kind of say, like, be like, oh, gee, wee wees when I try to make fun of them or I'll kind of burn them or clown them on something. I'd be like, gee, wee wees And then it was like, it, it was just funny, you know. But then when we, then they started saying it here and there to me, you know. But then when we spent like that time in Mexico, um, we'd be playing ping pong and shit like that. And then every time I was, I, I was losing at first, and I started smoking everybody. And every time I'd win, and if somebody was next, I'd be like, "Chee wee wee," so I or I scored a point. And then fucking next, you know, like these fuckers are calling me and just to say "chee wee wee" and shit like that. And um, there's a time where Raúl was like, like. I don't know. He was like 12, 14 years old, you know? And uh, he's always been like, kind of like a little, like he's always felt himself, you know? And uh, he was dancing and, and trying to clown me as a rolling. And he was already tough at that age. He was already tough and giving me some work. And I remember he kind of like, he, he was trying to clown me and then I grabbed him and I, and I submitted him. Right. And after I submitted him, I got up and I was like, Gee -wee -wee, you know, and then fucking, it kind of just went from there, bro. So I feel like when Torsios came out and like flipped him off and like disrespected him, like he didn't like we never planned on saying that shit or anything like that. So I feel like um, that night Torsios was like, fuck you, try to kick him. And then he choked him out. So then Raul was like, hey, I got you, motherfucker. Like, gee, wee, wee, you know, get you back but, into the back pocket of you beating him back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so that's kind of how it happened. And then. uh after that, it kind of blew up, and then I kind of didn't even... I was actually cornering another friend of mine that's a, like a brother to us, too. And uh, it turned out that his fight ended up falling through the day of the fight. His opponent didn't even show up to the venue after all. So it was like whack. And um, and then I got people sending me messages like, Hey, bro, fucking that fool's fucking just said that, this and that. And I'm like, oh, fuck, bro, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, hell no. I'm like, fuck, that shit's embarrassing. I didn't want, like, any, like, that's our thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, the yeah. and, silly and shit like that. Now the fucking whole world knows it, and I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm embarrassed. And then uh, he called me, and he's like, let's turn it into a brand. Let's let's let's, let's become business partners, you know? He's like, I always wanted to, like, I always wanted to, he, we always talked about one day doing something together, like investing some of our money and and starting a business together we didn't know what it was we we're talking about like getting apartments we we're talking about just investing money so then one day fucking you know uh fighting is not forever and all that shit's not forever so we figured we got to figure out how we're going to invest the money and uh and which we still got plans on doing other things like that but then 
he hit me up. He's like, let's let's be partners. Let's push this as a brand. And I was like, nah, bro. Like, if anything, just do it yourself. You know, like I don't need to be part of it. Like you're the one that made it blow up. And he was like, bro, like I'm gonna need a business partner, somebody to help me, regardless. So he's like, I'd rather you be one of the guys that gets a cut than all these other fucking guys that don't even know me or don't even grind with me, you know. So then I still kind of didn't want to do it. And then uh, Pops calls, you know, his dad. And he's like, hey, bro, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, like, <laughs> like he's like, you, you got to jump on it, you know, because somebody else is going to jump on it and they're going to get money. So why not be you, you know? And then after that, I was like, ah, I don't know, bro. I, I, I don't know. I'd rather just keep our relationship the way it is. And his dad's like, well, if you're not going to do it for yourself, then do it for your daughter, you know? Like, it's something, like, you could leave for her or something like that. Um, so I was like, all right, fuck it. So we did it, and then it actually just started going crazy, bro. It started going crazy. And uh, and uh, we went, like, on a little tour and stuff, and uh, we went, and as we're sleeping, I wake up, and I look at my phone, and I looked at the numbers it was doing, and I was like, what the fuck, you know? And I, and I wake Raul up, and I'm like, bro, look, look, look at what we did overnight. And he looks at it. And he's like, oh, fuck, bro, let's go back to sleep then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, let's keep making money in our sleep. But, um, but yeah, I'm grateful, bro. I'm grateful to have uh, them, those people in my life. You know, like, I just got back from Vegas. I was out there for two weeks doing camp. Uh, I'm going to be out here for my buddy's fight in a week. And then I'm going to head back over there and try to finish my camp over there, bro. Um, they've helped me out a lot and uh, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, you know, and, and mostly I feel like the most, the biggest thing that's been missing has just been like my mental, you know, like me believing in myself, me loving myself and, uh, and shit, you know, cause, uh, it takes a lot, bro, to, to get in there and do what we do, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I've had like, um, I've carried a lot of shit around on my shoulders for a long time, bro. And it's like, uh, I feel like, uh, at points I deserve, I felt like I went in there with my mind thinking like, Oh, I, I wish I get my ass whooped like, cause I deserve to get my ass kicked and shit like that, you know? And I never actually really got my ass fucking whooped, bro. Like, I haven't even seen, like, I've had 20 fights, like, amateur and pro, and I've never even seen my own blood yet. And and there's been times where I actually wanted to get my ass fucking smashed on, and it just kind of didn't happen, you know, or I'd, I'd be holding back and stuff. And it's like, I can't be having that mentality, bro. You know, I can't fucking be thinking like that, you know. Like, I deserve to win, so, like, especially if I'm putting in the work and I'm busting my ass, you know, and, and, and shit. So it's been a lot of the the mental thing for me to be honest no oh, and i feel like you uh, you're someone that's definitely growing every single time that you not only grow in that cage but also going in that gym you know they have the classic saying of getting better one percent every day and i think you have truly been a testament to that my man so i just want to go ahead and give you your flowers here for that but i also want to ask you a little bit i seen you recently got baptized as well i know that's a, that was a big moment that was something that was very emotional for you as well can you kind of go into that a little bit go into the reasoning and just overall of how much of that that meant for you because like how you said you're, you're really trying to better yourself in every asset and I, I, I think a lot of people are truly seeing that yeah to be honest it was because uh like i said i wasn't loving myself bro you know uh there was like in one of my post con fights I, I when i knocked that guy out with the elbow it was i think morgan i kind of said that i want to lose my life at one point you know what i'm saying and like that's what i'm talking about like the mental shit you know like uh like, I just carried a lot of shit from when I grew up and stuff like that. And like I said, I was going there thinking I wanted to get my ass kicked instead of thinking, like, I'm trying to kick this guy's ass. I was hoping that I was going to get fucked up and shit like that. And it's like, who the fuck thinks like that, you know? And uh, it was kind of like uh, a lot of things happened in my life. I went through a very dark time. Uh, like, around COVID, a lot of things started falling through in my life. Like, really bad, bro. Like, things got bad. Like, um, I... I don't really talk about this and I don't really want to get into it too much. But like at one point, like uh, my dad, my stepdad was like kidnapped in Guatemala. They're sending us videos of him being tortured and asking for money. And uh, uh, I had been, I was in a like toxic relationship. Uh, um, I had some problems at the time. I ended up training at Team Alpha Male for a little while, you know. So there was a lot of bad things going on in my life, bro. I was trying to get my contractor's license, bro. And like, I couldn't fucking pass my test, you know. And eventually we got through it, you know. But it was just like a dark time <clears throat> in my life. And um, and I uh, and I, I stopped believing in God, bro. You know, like uh, like I stopped believing in God like a while ago. Like uh, 
Like I, I saw my mom a long time ago, like we're broke as fuck and she had like a shopping cart with all our shit in there in a bus stop and we had nowhere to go, bro. And I carry that shit around for a long, long time, you know? And like, I was only 13 years old, you know, and I was a troublemaker and getting in trouble. I, it got to the point where I was just going through all that dark shit and stuff. And then I kind of stopped believing and I kind of almost gave up, you know, like, and, uh, and then, uh, then I wrote down some shit, bro. Like I wrote down some fucking goals and stuff like that. Like I, I had a conversation with a, a guy that used to watch me when I was in jail that I kept in contact. Like he was a correction officer and I kept in contact with that dude for like the longest. He's actually the one that kind of, I always wanted to be a fighter and shit like that. And he was like the one that told me like kind of like to pursue it. And uh, after that, like uh, I decided, uh, I decided like um, that I, I, uh, after all that shit, you know, I kind of didn't really believe, you know, and uh, and then some time went by from me feeling like the way I felt like in my head and shit. And uh, and I had wrote down some goals, bro. And uh, before you knew it, fucking uh, I had accomplished all the shit that I wrote down. And like I like I was talking about how I wanted to fucking pass that test, you know, I, I wanted to have a business and. I, I never really had shit growing up, bro. So I'd always look at like a, a truck and be like, damn, that shit's sick. I hope one day I have that shit or, or I wanted a car and stuff like that, like a nice car I, I have. And um, and then then I one day it happened. I had wrote down that shit, like uh, these goals. You know, I wrote down that day that I, I felt like shit, that I, I didn't feel like I wanted to be around. I wrote all that shit down on a paper. I put that paper away. I totally forgot about it, you know? And then two years later to the day, I'm fucking sitting on lunch. I, I'm going through my lunch bag to write down a customer's number. And it's that fucking paper where I wrote down these goals. And uh, I remember on the goals, I wrote down that I either wanted to get like a Dodge Ram or like a Lexus. And uh, that I wanted to get like a, a start the business. I wrote down that uh, I wanted to win a fight, you know, like in spectacular fashion, you know, like by knockout or some shit. And um and it kind of hit me at that moment, bro, because I pulled out that I pulled out the paper to write down the number, and I was like, "Hey, I gotta let you go, bro. Like, I'll call you back." And I hung up. And um, I had the I I I just looked at the paper and I started crying, and I was like, "Holy fuck, bro! Like, I fucking it was two years on the date. It was so at that moment I felt like it was God talking to me, bro. Like, uh, I had the truck, I had the car, bro. I had some money, I had." everything that i wrote down on there and and it tripped me out because i just wrote one or the other you know like either i want this truck or this car or i want the business or i want to win a fight and i had just knocked out two dudes in like less than a minute you know like combined that they won so it kind of it was like it, it kind of like i was like holy fuck and and that day when i was feeling like all fucked up like that and i wrote that shit down bro i had a hundred dollar bill and i went and i went to the store and I paid with that hundred dollar bill, and my change was a ten dollar bill, bro. That that I don't think I'm ever gonna spend in my life, you know. Like not even if I was broke, but that ten dollar bill right here, bro. Like if you see what it says, it says love, love yourself. Yeah. And to me, like who the hell else? Who was that, bro? That was God talking to me, bro. Like that's I know wild. I'm not trying to be weird or religious like that. But that's no, the reason that's I got baptized. Crazy. That's the reason That's... I got baptized, and and because I have a daughter, and I just want to be like a better man, a better example. Like a lot of people look up to me, bro. Like uh, a lot of people look up to me. Like a lot of people, like from where I grew up, uh, a lot of people look up to me. I've had people get out of prison that hit me up, like, "Hey, bro, like, give, me, like, I didn't even know who the fuck they were, but I was homeboys with some of their homeboys, and they know, and they're like, call this guy. This guy changed his life. This guy's like doing the right thing, and like uh." So like I hope I connected them with people down in SoCal, like you know, like uh, and it's crazy because now those guys are changing their life, you know, like they're off probation, they're off parole, or like just kids around here looking up to me and shit like that. Like uh, I don't want to be a bad example, and then um, and then I just wanted to accept myself, love myself, and uh, and I just felt like it was God talking to me, bro. Like uh, like it's crazy what I did in those like two years, you know. Like it's it I'm still like. It's crazy to me. It's fucking crazy. That is so definitely. Was, at that moment, I was like, I promised God, like I was like, hey man, like 
I remember promising him at the time, like, if you help me with this, like, I'm going to get baptized and I'm going to accept you in my life and everything. And I forgot about it, bro. Then two years just passed by. And then, like, after that, I was like, when I saw that, I was like, damn, I, I actually got to get baptized. I got to I gotta keep my promise. And because, uh, like, um, it fucking happened, bro. It's crazy, you know? And, like, I don't have yeah. to fight on the 15th, you know, uh, I, for no financial reasons or anything like that. I'm only going to fight because I want to fight. Because I love this shit. Like, you know, like, I, I'm not doing it because I want some fucking clout. Like, a lot of these clowns, you know, that want to be seen or want to act like they're fighters, but they fucking fight once every two years or they only take the fight if it's the right guy. Like, I'm doing this shit because I love it and because I enjoy it. And in that brand, in that bow fight, it was like the first time where I actually had fucking fun, bro. Even though things didn't go my way and it was a war. I never felt so comfortable and I, and I actually enjoyed it, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, I can't explain it to you, but like, I remember like when I got out of the cage, like fucking Raul's like, you had fun, huh, bro? And I was like, yeah, he's like, I know, I know I could tell. And then his dad's like, bro, you had fun. Like, this is what you were born to do. Like, like it was fun. And then little by little, I was like, all right, like I'm going to get baptized. And finally I pulled the trigger, you know, like I was talking about it for like almost about a year nine months and then finally like uh i went to dinner and i was telling like this guy i want to get baptized he's like well i'm i'm the pastor i can baptize you if you want and i was like well fuck let's do it and then i just went and i did it and i'm just trying to be like more conscious of the way i am you know like try to be nicer to people try, try not to do the bad things you know like i'm not perfect and i know i'm gonna fuck up a bunch more but you get what i'm saying 100% no and I think a lot of people will be very inspired by that message and I think there's a lot of people out there that are probably wondering where their purpose may be in life and where exactly they're lining up on the whole grand scheme that we call this yeah, wonderful bro, life. I just made weight. He's in the wrong way in bro so I'm just saying bye to him. <laughs> hey my man. Hey best of luck to you brother. Uh, you. Love you bro. <laughs> Carlos, an absolutely inspirational story, man. I mean, I, I think not even storybooks in Hollywood could go ahead and write something like that. Originally from the streets over there in Santa Ana, correct? Uh, Anaheim, Orange County, yeah, but yeah. And then now over in Santa Rosa, it's been a journey. Yeah, and, and it was kind of crazy too because I, me and Raul recently we went to somebody's court hearing, like just some guy like that. And uh, there's like a doctor, bro, like pretty much like asking to like the court to give this kid another chance, you know, and like everything like they talked about, bro, they pretty much described my life. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that the doctor was saying was kind of saying like how this guy just needed another shot life rehab, but like not rehab for drugs, you know, but like rehab to rehab his head, rehab his way of thinking. And like, uh, and she was talking about how only that two to three percent of people like get out of that situation, and then it kind of almost made me believe that like, that I, I'm different, bro. Like uh, I shouldn't be here, you know, and like to be where I'm at, uh, to have the things that I, have. I know materialistic things ain't shit, bro. But I could have never imagined myself driving a fucking sixty thousand dollar car, or a fucking uh, eighty thousand dollar truck, or anything like that. But I couldn't, even, I kind of didn't even know what type of that type of money was, you know. And for me to be here and be doing my thing and and be doing this just because I love it, it's like uh, I I I am I consider myself special, bro. I consider like good gods had me, you know. I feel like I'm favored by them, and that's really why I'm trying to give my life to them. I definitely think that a little bit of God's magic has came into play with Carlos Figueroa's career. I know you stated that you have that contracting business as well. Do you want to give a little plug in for that? A little shout out uh, for anybody in the NorCal area that's possibly looking for your work? Yeah, yeah. We do a uh, fire protection and stuff. Uh, so mo most of our work actually like comes from like the fire department and stuff. Wow. So like new construction homes and stuff like that. We do like fire protection and stuff like that. So you could pretty much like if you need any of that, you could hit me up at 707-888-5251. And uh, it's uh, called Cali Fire Protection. And um, yeah, and if you need some merch, you go on the Chiwiwis and get, get some merch, you know. But, but yeah, that, yeah, that's what I do. I uh, I started doing that when I first got here. I, I moved up here and uh, I needed a job. I had no idea what I was applying for, bro. I had no idea what I was applying for 
all I knew was that I wanted to be in my kid's life when I moved up here because I have a daughter. And when I moved up here, I was broke as fuck, no money. And um, I got that as a job. And I remember, like, within the first week of working, like, I saw, like, the owner, obviously, of the company. And I was like, nah, I need to be that motherfucker. I need to figure out how the fuck I'm going to be in that full shoes, you know? And, yeah, that's always been my mentality, bro. Like, I always, like, want to be the man, you know? Like, when I was locked up, I wanted everybody to fear me and for me to be the man, you know? And, like, when I got out to the real world and I saw shit like that, like, I was like, I want to be that guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, because uh, when you're young and you're not guided the right way, you think that this is the way, you know? But I, I've i always felt like in anything, like, that I've done, I've always wanted to be the man. If Like, not being cocky or anything like that, bro, it's just my attitude and the way I look at life. Like, I don't, I want to be the guy, you know? It's sometimes, you know, I call it the the way it's the way it's survival of the fittest, the way you're raised. You know, you oftentimes you see somebody above you and you're like, hey, I'll, you know, it's like how you said you want to be in that you want to be in that guy's shoes. or You want to figure out how you can be that guy for, you know, whatever you're going into. And I think there's definitely a lot of people that have that mindset. But, man, you got a mindset and a motor like no other, Carlos. Any else that you want to thank before we hop off on this call here today and get this recording all underway i know you got your teammate going over there at weigh-ins right now so i want to give you some prompt time but anybody else that you want to thank before we go ahead and end this call here today uh, i just want to thank my team uh dave my teammates like raul his parents and uh just anybody that supports me i appreciate everybody you know i appreciate you taking the time to talk to me uh just yeah that's it man i just uh and i want to thank god obviously for uh for giving me another day, another chance and, and health to do what I love to do, you know, and, and, and doing it because I love it, not because I need to do it. So I'm just blessed and I'm thankful. So thank, thank you to everybody that supports me, everybody that is listening, anybody that's motivated out for this or anybody that's going through a hard time, you know, like, like hard times don't last, like hard people do. So just keep that in mind. Like, uh, like no matter what you're going through, like you're going to, you're going to get through it. So just keep keep pushing forward, you know, and you, you'll eventually get out of the storm. Pushing through. That, and that's pretty much it, brother. Hey, my man. Always a great pleasure to have you on the program. Always welcome to have you on any time, my man. Michael Hernandez, MLH Media, Uncensored, with my guy Carlos Figueroa. We're going to be signing out.